Hello and welcome back to Present to Connect. This is my series of videos which fill in as a substitute for my talk about how to make a really good presentation. I am still Mark Omar in case you haven't seen the other videos. I am not fussy about what, what tools that you use when you are manipulating and creating your images. Um, these are changing so quickly and you know what, most of you probably know how to manipulate images and if you don't that's a really big field and I'm not going to teach you how to do it here. I am just going to give you some guidelines for how to use images well in your presentation. I used this slide before when I was talking about constructing your pack and it's a bit of an exaggeration of how bad some slides are but it's not all that bad. Some people go with like just a little bit of um, art tucked away in the corner but mainly they're putting words on the screen. I think this is a mistake. I think you should use images because people get them instantly and they don't distract from your message. People have to look to you for the words and that what, that's what they should be doing because you are the presentation, not the words on the screen. So a much better thing to do is an image like this. Now this image I actually got off Flickr, it's Creative Commons, it's completely free and legal for me to use and I'm not, you know, I'm commanding the screen, it's something that people will remember, it is iconic. Far too many people just pick an image, dump it in the middle of the screen and I actually think that looks really tacky. It just looks really, really basic. There's nothing visually appealing about it. They think that all of this space around the side here is somehow useful. And in fact, it's just a lost opportunity to get the attention of your audience. Probably 60% of that slide is white space and it's serving no useful purpose. You can put a border on and a border helps. But what I would strongly encourage you to do is go to the entire screen. Drag it out so that you fill every pixel that is in front of people. Like this, you know, this truck here, you get a sense of just how big it is. Big, you look at billboards, they don't leave borders around the edge, they don't waste that space. They fill the space with the image that they want to tell people about. Now, there are going to be situations where you're going to have an image where it's going to look strange or it's going to pixelate to the point of looking dreadful if you expand the image like that. So, here's what I think you should do. Take a lesson from Apple who are very good the way that they brand their products and they put them in the boxes and stuff. They use white space really well to draw your attention to the important bits if you see here on the iPad box. So you can do this too. This picture of the truck, if you can't make it fill the whole screen or you just want to emphasise that this thing is really small, then make it small. So put it, and again, I reckon make it probably 20% of the um, real estate on the screen, but make it deliberately small so that it's clear that you've made a deliberate decision here and I actually think it pays off in terms of how professional it looks. Two more things. There are sweet spots on the screen. Photographers know about this and artists know about this and I can't explain the science of it to you. But if you draw a noughts and crosses board across the screen, those bits where the lines um, connect those are the sweet spots where important elements of your image should be. So there's one of them there. This is not a sweet spot. This is too high. In the middle, lots of people think, oh, I'll just plonk it in the middle. But that actually just looks really ordinary. So again, put it on where those lines meet. This also applies, well, I guess not also, but this picture here is a nice enough picture, but it's not either about sky or earth. But if you move with a line of the horizon up to the sweet spot line, which is, you know, where the first line would be for the noughts and crosses, then it is a picture about the field. And if you move it down, then it is a picture about the sky. One more thing I want to say is here's the picture I used of myself. Now, if I grab this and I make it big enough to fill the screen, then I've got to make it quite big. Now, I could do that. But that much of me, I just think, is scary. And there's also a risk that it could pixelate to the point where it's just not worthwhile. So what you do is you go and you drag it in, and you drop it in the screen. But see how I'm dragging it from the corner there? I'm keeping it all in proportion. If I do what some people do, is I grab it and I drag it to the top, and now to the bottom, and out to the sides, and out to the side again, and suddenly I have a massively fat face. Now, not only is this not good because it makes me look like Fat Albert, but it's also not good because it distracts the audience. When they see something completely out of proportion, they have that moment of thinking, hang on, what's going on here? What's wrong with this picture? And when they're thinking about that, they're not thinking about what I want them to be thinking about in the presentation. So don't distort your images. It distracts your audience. Just get it 
And what I do is I pop it in the corner, I grab it here, and I drag it out as far as I need to, and then just put it back in the spot you want. Now, as you can see, I'm going to have to drag that out a little bit more. There you go. But if you drag from the corners, then everything stays in proportion, and your images are serving your story, which is what they should be doing, not distracting your audience. So we're getting towards the end of Present to Connect. The next bit is quite important, and that's about actually delivering your presentation.